appreciate it. I very appreciate all what you are talking about it. Good day and good day to all the viewers of Afri Media. Thank you. Thank you, Afri Media. between uh, Mali and France have continued to take a turn for the worse after the West African state uh, military government on Monday ordered all non-governmental organizations including aid groups uh, financed by France to stop activity in the country. The government's official statement which was read on state television on uh, Monday evening indicated that the decision was made after France's announcement of its suspension of development aid to Mali which came uh, last week and which uh, France explained was due to concerns about Mali working with Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group. In its communique dated November 16, 2022, France specified that it would maintain humanitarian aid despite suspending development aid. Following this development, uh, Mali's transitional government, represented by Interim Prime Minister Colonel Abdoulaye Mag Maiga, has decided to prohibit with immediate effect all activities carried out by NGOs operating in Mali with funding or with material or technical support from uh, France, including in the humanitarian field. The government that also claimed that France's suspension of aid is intended to deceive and manipulate public opinion for the purpose of destabilizing and isolating Mali and went ahead to refer to France's aid to Mali as dehumanizing aid or used as a means of blackmailing rulers and actively supporting terrorist groups operating on Malian soil. Diplomatic relations between uh, Mali and France have uh, been increasingly tense in recent times since France backed uh, sanctions by the West African bloc ECOWAS against Mali over delayed elections. The French ambassador was expelled in uh, January and uh, French President uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, announced the withdrawal of French troops after almost 10 years in February. France has repeatedly accused Mali of working with Russian mercenaries, which the Malian government has denied, claiming to only work with Russian instructors. What future then for diplomatic relations between France and Mali? This is Views on the Continent. Stay with us. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this other edition of Views on the Continent, where we take a look at what is happening on the continent. And today, our focus is on Mali that has banned all non-governmental organizations uh, backed by uh, France, and it says they are not going to continue operating in the country. Yeah. So uh, this is the latest uh, row in the diplomatic uh, relations between uh, France and uh, Mali. A Malian uh, interim government has asked that all non-governmental organizations uh, uh, being uh, supported by France or being uh, uh, financed by France should uh, stop operating on Malian soil. Uh, and this follows a uh, decision by the French government to uh, stop uh, development aid to the West African state. Uh, so what then does the future hold for the diplomatic relations between uh, France and uh, Mali? That's going to be a point of uh, discussion this day. Uh, and for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, this is an interactive program. It is a program where you can always call and tell us what you think about today's topic or any other issue that is of prime interest to the continent at this point in a time and when the time is right our numbers will be put on the screen so on the screen our lines will be open so that you can always uh, tell us what you think about today's uh, topic uh, also this program is streaming live on facebook uh, and uh, you can visit our facebook page Afric media and drop a comment uh, uh, tell us what you think about today's uh, topic uh, and today of course uh, discussing with us uh, this very pertinent issue uh, that has been going on between uh, mali and france in recent times uh, is uh, uh, Mr. Elijah Enoakua. He is uh, a researcher with uh, Leeds University on African Development. Hello, sir, and thanks for uh, joining us on the program this day. Mr. Elijah, can you open your mic? Your mic seems not to be activated.
Hello? Yes, can you hear me now? You. Yes, I can hear you now. Carry on. All right, I was just saying hello to uh, Afrig Media and all the viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be here today to discuss this issue with you and um, hopefully share some ideas on this uh, beautiful continent of Africa and what's happened to Africa as a whole. So thanks for having me today. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Now, let's, let's uh, dive straight away into the matter of the day. Uh, now, we have uh, France and Mali uh, in this uh, diplomatic rift uh, uh, time and again. Uh, we know relations between two countries have uh, deteriorated in recent uh, times. Uh, now, how would you analyze this diplomatic war that is going on between these two countries, Mali and France? I'm not going to limit that to just Mali and uh, Laurentia. We understand that France as a country is losing interest in Africa so fast. And I do not know those people who are advisors to the French government at this time in regards to their African policy. I don't know what those policymakers are thinking in their head. There is a rise, they call it anti-French sentiments. It is not anti-French sentiments. The Africans do not just get up from bed one day and say, we want to have anti-French sentiments. No, it's a coordinated response to a people that have been maltreated for so many years that are like saying what we say in French, rather bored. That's they, they've gotten to the point where they say they can't take it anymore. And instead of France, you know, looking at the root cause of the problem, they are using all kinds of maneuvers. Before the Malian government went to this decision to ban these uh, NGOs, there was something going on the ground. It's not just in Mali. If you look at Burkina Faso, look at Chad, look at Tunisia, look at even Cameroon, where you are based. There's a lot of French maneuver going on in the background, and many people do not understand what's going on. France is losing interest so fast in Africa, and they are resorting to all kinds of monopolistic, below the belt. Uh, tactics in order to maintain their, uh, their stay in Africa. But I am telling you and the rest of the world, and if there are French people who understand English and are listening to this show, that that is not going to help France in Africa. France should better look at the root cause of why there's this anti-French sentiments growing up all over French Africa. Not just French Africa, the rest of the African countries that are not speaking French are also seeing what they're going on. But this epicenter of this issue is in a lot of French-speaking countries in Africa that people are saying, hey, wait a minute, we cannot continue on this path with this france africa relationship. So if France thinks that, oh, they are going to use NGOs, these other tactics, or this other tactic to maintain their presence in Africa, they're making a mistake. We are no more in the 15th century or in the 17th century or in the 18th century. We are in a new century with technology, with people who are intelligent, they read, they see what's going on, and people want to take their countries by themselves and rule their country. So that's what's happening. Instead of friends looking to the root cause of the problem, they're going through a monopoly because this is uh, 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 on the ground, below the belt, you know, tactics that country use, they go through NGOs, they go through these organizations, they go through people, they go through puppet leaders, they go through different means in order to maintain their grip on power on, 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 on those countries. But France is making a big mistake. They should rethink their African strategy. It doesn't matter. They can use try to use Francophonie. People are open. People's eyes are open. They might try to use the NGOs. People's eyes are open. They might even try to use some puppet leadership. People's eyes are open. Africans are not going to go back to the France of Africa the way it was. It's going to be a bilateral relationship, country to country, on equal basis. That is what France is missing at this time. And what they are just doing now is just manipulation. They're not going to succeed. That is not the way to deal with Africa in this 21st century. They're making a big mistake. Do you... Do you think uh, France is uh, really uh, willing to uh, uh, know uh, about this anti-French uh, sentiment or it really wants to continue to impose itself uh, on, uh, the, on African soil uh, thinking that uh, things uh, will continue to be as they used to and that it, it still has that uh, supremacy over Africa? Not at all. Not at all, Laurentia. You know, 
Uh, let me take you, our viewers, a little bit memory lane. If you understand what France and free policy have been in Africa, you understand where people are coming from. Just take a few cases. Look at the case of Guinea. When France decided to give Guinea two options, they said, if you want to get your independence, two options. You either lose everything we've invested in the country, or you maintain France, I mean, uh, France as the only country that you're going to deal with. The Guineans decided to go the other way. What did the French do? They destroyed every single thing in the country when they were living. I mean, every single thing. They destroyed the banking system. They destroyed the economy. They decimated everything. And it's the same thing they're doing with the Balkan, Operation Balkan right now. As the French are living, the Sahel, they are destroying every single asset that they had in that region. So you are building anti-French sentiment by itself. And you're thinking that you're going to maintain your power yourself as a... Uh, a governing power, whatever it is, in that region, it is not going to happen. The French should wake up that the policies that they used to maintain in Africa are not going to prevail anymore. The French need to deal with Africans on bilateral relationship, on equal basis. Trying to use NGOs to manipulate yourself to stay in the country is not going to work. What do you think? A group of people whose economy if they were to be left by themselves to rule the economy, will be in their trillions. Yet, you have their currency being controlled by that country, the France CFA. If you know what that means for these economies, you have puppet leaders being implemented and trying to be uh, installed on the people here and there, like the case we have in Chad. And we see confrontation going on in those countries. We have the case of Burkina Faso. We have the case of Cameroon. We have the case... If you go to all African countries that were former French colonies, you see the sentiments that people have against this country, which are legitimate. France, the current policy that France has now is not sustainable, Laurentia. It doesn't matter how they try to do it. Their current policies towards Africa as a whole, especially the former French colonies, is not sustainable. They need to change course. Nobody hates France. Nobody. I don't hate France. You don't hate France. No African country gets up from bed and say, we hate this country. No. It is because of their systematic policies of assimilation where they want to come in. They want to implement French policies. They want you to take the French culture. They want to manipulate the economy. They want to be the only country that rules your resources. Do you know that in most African countries, the laws... And the agreement that they go into with France says, in order for you to exploit your resources, France has to be considered first. It is only when France does not have the capacity and the technology to exploit those resources that you now give that contract to other countries. What kind of agreement or accord will be so domineering and so assimilating to a country to dictate and say, if you want to go into an exploitation agreement, France must be considered first. Africans are tired of those kind of policies. And as I said before, if France does not rethink the Africa strategy, France is going to lose all of French Africa. Remember, Rwanda is gone. Rwanda used to be a French. Uh, uh, they were not colonized by them. But they were in, in accord with them. And France, I mean, a French was the language of instruction and everything. When Kagame came over, he said, look, what? You are accusing us that we are the one, uh, the genocide, and they wanted to implement, impl uh, judge him in court all the way in France. He, he, he just tore them off and implemented English as the language of instructions. And today, France is licking their wounds because of that decision. Everything French, you don't find it in Rwanda anymore. If the rest of African countries follow the example of Rwanda, I'm telling you, it's not going to take long before French will be, I mean, a French influence will be er eradicated from Africa. So again, nobody hates France. The French government and the French policymakers should rethink their policy towards Africa. Otherwise, they will lose the rest of French Africa not very long from now, Laurentia.
Mr. Elijah. Now, the government statement, uh, the uh, uh, Malian government statement uh, claimed that France's suspension of aid is intended to uh, deceive and manipulate public opinion for the purpose of uh, destabilizing and isolating Mali. What are your thoughts on this? Well, this is what they did. They cut the funds that they were giving to humanitarian funds or developmental funds or whatever it is. When you do that to a country and you're saying that, okay, they are collaborating with the Watna group. Again, I am not a fan of Russia. I am not a fan of Russia here. Let me be honest. But Mali as a country has the right to go into partnership with anybody they want. Coming to dictate to them and say, we can only work with you if you stop working with country A or B or C, it's still the same mentality of master and a servant trying to control the economy, control the country. That's what Mali says, hey, come on. We are not in that relationship anymore. You are not going to tell us who to work with. We try to work with you guys to combat the terrorists in the north, but it did not work out. We cut ties. So you can't tell us who to work with. Again, as I said before, I am not a fan of Russia, but what I'm saying here is that Mali as a country has the right to work with whoever they think best meets their interests. And France has no right to dictate to them. That is what the problem is. France is trying to dictate to them and say, oh, you cannot work with the Wagner Group, you cannot work with Russia, you cannot work with this, you cannot work with this one. It's still that same policy of France and Frick, saying that we are the sole country you're supposed to work with. Without us, we don't want you to work with anybody else. And Africans are saying, hey, wait a minute. We are not more servants here anymore. You are not a master to dictate to us who to work with, who to partnership with, who to go into economic alliance with. We are working as equal partners. If you bring a solution that's going to solve our problem, we gave you the opportunity in the Operation Balkan to work with us and see how we can get rid of these terrorists in the north. You came in, instead of working with us, you were playing a deal with the Tuaregs in the north and the, our, our Jihad in the north, and instead of driving them away, you're trying to get into a, a deal with them. They say, no, we want you to fight these people and not to negotiate with them in their own way. But then, instead of looking into the you know, complaints of the Malian government, they are now coming with tactics and saying, you either work with us or you, nothing else. That is not the policy that's going to work in Africa in this 21st century. It is not going to work. You are not going to dictate to Africans. It is not going to work. So you better come to the table and say, okay, we can work at partners. We have these ideas. Do you think these ideas will work in your country? Then African will welcome you with open arms and say, yes, we have a partner here. Then you have to start rethinking all your colonial pacts with Africa, all your colonial pacts. Because it's not just one thing that is angering Africans as a whole. The colonial pacts that France went into with a lot of African countries is very destructive. It is true that African leaders are, you know, this, I will always blame them, 85% of what's happening in Africa, but there is no gain saying that France is holding the strings behind the curtain in many countries in Africa. Who becomes president? Who becomes this? Who controls the sector of the economy? Who controls? So all those strings of issues is piling up to whatever decisions you see African leaders taking now that might be anti-French. So the French should better rethink their policy instead of going into this tit for tat with Mali or Burkina Faso or whatever country. It will not work in this dispensation. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, now, the statement also mentions that uh, it oh, it's also referring to the aid uh, uh, France is uh, giving to uh, Mali as uh, dehumanizing uh, aid uh, used as uh, a means of blackmailing rulers and actively supporting uh, terrorist uh, groups operating on Malian soil. How true do you think this is? Let me put this in context. Let me put this in context. When you have a country that is funding um, NGOs, and those NGOs are on the ground gathering military intelligence, um, gathering intelligence about the economy, gathering who uh, Mali is working with, and funneling that information to France. Every country has the right to react that way. We've seen that. It's a method that countries, not just France, even the United States does that. Many countries in the world do that. They will go, they will come through these NGOs that want to do this, want to do this. But behind it, they are gathering intelligence, they are gathering information, they are gathering, you know, 
counterintelligence issues. They use that even in terrorism. You know, many countries use that even in a good way. But France is now using it in a good way. They are going through these NGOs and say they are fuddling, you know, because they've been driven away from the country. We know that they've been expelled. But they are looking for other means to come to the country. In so doing, these NGOs, they are legitimate reports that we have seen that instead of doing the humanitarian work, they are going in and showing, oh, look at the weakness of the so-called military junta. They gather all that information. They are projecting that. If you look, I don't want to call names. If you look at French media in Africa and look at what they are projecting as the weakness of the military government in Mali, it is information that is gathered by these NGOs being used to undermine the interests of the government in that country. So the government of Mali has a point in this case. We are being objective here that if you have NGOs that are supposed to be doing what they intend to do or they su suggest that they are doing, but they are gathering information and they see that information in French media projecting either the so-called weakness of the junta government and dehumanizing them and say they cannot do anything. Look at this, look at this failure, look at this one, look at this one. That is using your own aid to undermine the interests of the government in place. It is true that it's a military junta, but give them the opportunity to show what they can do to the people. Mm. The people love them. The people are behind them. Instead of undermining them, look at the root causes why there is this anti-French sentiment in the country. Undermine the military junta is not going to solve French-African relationship issues. That is where they are failing. Yes, the junta has a cause here. It has a reason to suggest that these NGOs are dehumanizing because what they are showing, if you go to their country, Malaysia, I mean, uh, uh, Lawrence, if you look at their media, what they're going to show you are the poorest right. sites in that country. Mm -hmm. They're going to show you how the government is failing. Look at the poverty level. Look at this. Look at this. Look at war. Children are dying. The, the interest is not to help. I mean, they're not showing that in order to get any foreign support in order to support the country. They're showing that in order to undermine that government. That's dehumanizing. Dehumanizing. The thing that that government has done that, you know, can be appreciated, that can be shown to the whole world. You will never find that in foreign media or French media. They use only what they think is a failure of that government to say, look at human condition, look at the way children are living, look at poverty, look at war, look at this. And the kind of children they show the war, they show you children with flies on their nostrils and entering there, they've never eaten for 100 years and so on. It's a humanizing way of showing Africa. And it's true that that government is saying, instead of using these NGOs to dehumanize us, get away with it. And I support that 100%. Okay, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah. If you're just joining us, this is Views on the Continent, and we're talking about uh, Mali. Uh, the interim uh, junta government has uh, uh, banned all uh, French NGOs from operating in the country, uh, and uh, this follows a decision uh, taken by France to uh, stop uh, development aid to uh, Mali. What is your take on this? Our numbers are on the screen. Our lines are open. You can call us and tell us what you think about today's topic. Uh, for some time now, uh, there has been a diplomatic rift between uh, Mali and uh, France, and uh, France uh, seems uh, to want to continue to have its grip on the West African states, whereas uh, most Malians have gone out on the streets. Uh, they have called for France to leave the country. Uh, so some, something that uh, led to uh, the uh, French uh, government uh, pulling its uh, Operation Bakan out of the country. Uh, it announced in February that it was going to pull out its military from the country. So what a future lies uh, for the diplomacy that is going on between Mali and France? Uh, what is the future for their diplomatic ties? Uh, that's what we would like to hear from you. You can always call us and tell us what you think about today's program. Now, coming back to you, Mr. Elijah. Now, some information gathered from uh, the uh, uh, French, uh, uh, the, the, the official website of the uh, uh, French uh, Foreign Ministry. It says uh, every year since 2013, Mali and its people have uh, benefited from uh, more than 100 million euros in uh, French official development assistance and humanitarian aid that has helped the Malian people gain access to health care, drinking water, electricity, and education. So do you think when you look at the Malian population at this point in time, do you think that this decision taken by the government, the people are going to react negatively to this? 
if you look at what is happening in Mali uh, and the rest of Africa, Lawrence, you, you see that people are tired of these tactics. They say, oh my goodness, want to come in, there's water, there's electricity, there's this, but is the goal, what is the goal of those um, projects? The, is it the goal? Is the goal to actually help the people? The goal is to come in in another way to manipulate those economies. Because if you are talking about water and electricity, why sh should the French, you know, not consider those sectors they say they have been sponsored? Why will they pull out? Because they suspect that Mali is working with the Wagner Group. How do these two match together? You say that you are in to produce water and, you know, help poverty in the nation. How does the fact that the government is working with the Wagner Group to fight terrorists contradict water and electricity or whatever you're doing for the country? How does that contradict? That's to tell you that they were doing this with a secondary aim. We call that an aid with strings attached. There were strings attached to that aid. That is why they're cutting up that aid. If there are no strings attached, they will still go humanitarian. People are still there. They still need water. They still need the electricity. Why will we now cut off the water and the electricity funding that you've been funding because the government is trying to use whatsoever NGO in order to fight terrorists. That's to say that whatever you were doing, there was a secondary aim and a secondary uh, motive behind it. And Africans see beyond that in this dispensation. It doesn't matter what they do. Like, you know, recently we even heard about the State Department in the United States threatening the government of Burkina Faso, for example not to go into any alliance with uh, Russia and the Wagner Group. It is still France behind it, because these are NATO alliance. France is still going behind to use their partners in the NATO alliance to threaten the rest of the African continent. So we see that the policy of France, it doesn't matter what they put on their website and said, oh, this aid that we're giving was helping millions. But when you have this aid with strings attached and people see beyond the veil, it is not going to go far. Africans are now saying, we want our dignity. Let us die. Don't give us that water. As long as you are going to give us water and then tomorrow you are controlling our economy, we don't want your water. As long as you're going to give us electricity and tomorrow you are controlling our, our economy, we don't want that electricity. Let us die. But I'm telling you, if Africans should come to this level where they are able to take the patrimony of their nation at hands and rule, again, I give a condition and rule with the interests of the people at heart. I am telling you, before long, I mean, uh, Mali will become another Rwanda. I'm not, not talking about genocide. I'm talking about that development because look at what's happening in Rwanda today. It's becoming an epitome of an example of an African country that has gone beyond what it was. We're talking about inflation in the whole world. If you go to Rwanda today, the inflation is at 4%, but the whole world is talking about 20, 30% inflation. You don't find that happening in Rwanda. How were they able to do it? We have people that are taking control of their country and they are ruling it with the interests of the people. So if these military junctures can show that proof, I'm telling people will say, France, go to hell with your water, go to hell with your electricity. We will rather stay where we are with this leadership that we have and maintain our national patrimony than to yield to your peanuts, you know, peanuts help of water and electricity or whatever it is and food, and then you control the rest of the economy. How is it possible, Laurentian, that France does not have any gold mine? They don't have gold in France, but this country is the 11th gold reserve country in the world. How is that possible? Where is that coming from? It's coming from Africa. How is it possible that economy the economies of more than eight or nine or 20 countries have their natural resources stored in your country in terms of their foreign reserve. And you control the gains and everything. If the country fluctuates and goes up, every gains remain in your economy. And those countries don't benefit anything. How is it possible that those countries will stay quiet and say, oh, we are giving you water and electricity and this, and therefore you should take that. No, people see behind the veil. You can take millions of resources and they give us peanuts and you want us to be jubilating because you're giving us peanuts? No. People will say no. We, we know the game. People are enlightened. People know what's going on. And people are said, we are tired with France manipulation of Africa. Enough and enough. Get out of Africa.
let's come back to, uh, to talk about uh, the sovereignty of this uh, different African states and Mali in particular. We have uh, France uh, deciding uh, who Mali should treat with or to deal with or, or not. And if you take a look at the continent, uh, that's what has been going on over time. But recently we see that Africans are coming out to uh, try to change the narrative. So what gives uh, France that, uh, that aura to want to uh, dictate to uh, these African countries whom they should be dealing with and what they should be doing? And how can these different African countries fight that? You see, they, they are seeing the, in the mentality of France Afrique. That's what they are thinking. The mentality of France Afrique is the one that, like I said before, you have all these contracts that African countries are signing. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's called contract or colonial uh, negotiation or whatever it was called, where France was given the sole right to be the one to exploit the resources of that country, except in cases where France does not have the technology and France does not have the capability to exploit in that sector. Therefore, you can now think about a different country. That is the mentality that they still have to you today. But as we speak, a country like Cameroon, where you are, France went from 40% of France, I mean, uh, 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 industries in Africa, in Cameroon, up to 10% today. And who is gaining? Russia, I mean, uh, China. China. China is the one gaining. So France is sleeping. They are thinking that those policies still work. They don't work. African countries are gradually, gradually getting rid of that French colonial mass. The only thing that is left, I shouldn't say the only thing. One of the things that they still love to do is what I mentioned. The France CFA is a canker worm in the economy of this country. They should get rid of that thing. Let them have their own currency. Because as long as your economy is so tied to France in this way, all your resources, I mean, foreign reserves are stored in France and they are maxed out because the currency is tax, there's no way these countries are going to develop as that level. So they should get rid of that franc CFA and have their own currency. As we speak today, for example, the Zambian Kwasha Kwasha, you have one US dollar is equal to 12.39, 12.39 Zambian Kwasha, but you have one US dollar it's equal to 649 francs CFA. What a mess. What a mess. For eight countries that have one currency, but you see the pecking between US dollar, so ridiculous. And then you have a small Zambia, small Zambia, having this strong currency because they have the autonomy and the control over their own currency. So I am advocating that all French former colonies that are still using that thing called franc CFA should get rid of it very, very fast. That is how you're going to get control of the economy. Yes, you are fighting France. Yes, we don't want all these French policies, but go beyond that. Go beyond that, and it will yield fruits. So again, to answer your question, France still have that france African mentality. That's what they think. They think they can manipulate the way. Their way. They think they can use the State Department in the United States to push Burkina Faso, push even Mali, push this country and say, don't deal with Russia, don't deal with China, don't deal with this. It is not going to work. As they are doing that, these countries are gradually re replacing French interests in their countries with wherever they feel these countries are coming in as partners. So France should better rethink. If you look at French colonies as we speak, whether you are talking about Tunisia, you are talking about Morocco. Morocco, as we speak today, it was a former, you know, they had this former French relationship. But today, more than 60% of Moroccan businesses are Americans. They're dealing with the United States. So the United States is playing a double game here. They're using France and say, oh, yeah, we'll support you because we are members of the NATO. But they're going behind. They're sweeping everything. Before their eyes will open like this, everything will be taken away from them. And there will be nowhere to be found. So those who are behind French policies are losers. They do not understand what's happening in Africa. And they think that they can still use france Africa mentality and say, oh, yeah, we are from a French colony. Before you go into any negotiation with any country, consider France first. Remember this. Remember that. People are saying, go away with those contracts. And they're going right in with negotiation with these countries. And it is working for them. France is not going to come back and say, no, you are a former French colony. You signed this agreement. It doesn't work like that in this 21st century. And France will get up from bed one day and see, hey, we are losers in Africa. They better rethink. 
All right, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah Francis, to rethink its uh, policies in Africa if it really wants to uh, continue its uh, relations with the continent. Now, uh, let's uh, uh, take a look at why uh, France uh, has much interest in uh, Mali, because when you take a look at all the its former colonies, uh, France is very much interested uh, in the, the activities of uh, Mali, in what goes on in Mali. Do you think there is any particular reason why France is much interested in what is going on in Mali than in its other uh, former uh, colonies in the continent? It is just a matter of time, Laurentia. It's a matter of time. The reason that it started with Mali, there are many reasons behind that. Even the economic reasons, the bauxite, the um, aluminum, and the gold mines, and everything, they are being exploited. But the, the worsening case that happened is in the Sahel. I explained to a couple of people, a couple of them, when I had a, a conference like this on somewhere, I said, the downfall of France is the toppling of uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Sarkozy thought they could use NATO and do that. But when they topple uh, uh, Gaddafi, what happened is that all the weapons that were being used, they were now started moving down from Mali. I mean, uh, from uh, Libya, Libya. Towards Mali, towards Burkina Faso, towards Chad. And that's what even Idris, you know, uh, Debbie was killed because that convoy, when they left Libya with all this military artillery, they were going straight to Chad. So it branched off. So when it branched off, you know, the Tuaregs in the north of um, Mali took up arms and said, hey, what is this? We have this, we have this gold, we have this bauxite. Why is France controlling all this? They took up those arms. And now, when they took up those arms, terrorists, terrorists took advantage of that. And France's eyes were like, what? All the gold mines have been controlled. Everything. France is not going there because they love Mali. I mean, the Operation Balkan was not because they love Mali. They love Burkina Faso. They love this. It is because the gold mines that were in that area have been taken over by those terrorists that overtook the Tuaregs. The Tuaregs were not terrorists at the beginning, but they, they went into a, an agreement with ISIS, ISIS affiliated. But when France saw that, they said, oh, we cannot allow these people to control those gold mines. They went in with Operation Balkan. As they went in with those Operation Balkan, things that was me out. They were not able to pull, uh, drive those terrorists out. They now started signing treaties, agreement with the Tuaregs, the Awazajik in the north. As that happened, people's eyes were like, those in the south were like, we thought these people wanted to fight terrorists. How can you be signing agreements and contracts with these people? It became a full-scale war. So even though they take terror terrorism as the front and put it at the front and say they are fighting terrorism, but the initial trigger was the fact that those gold mines and aluminum mines were being controlled by those people and they had to fight. So it is their interest that is at heart here. It is their interest. Even the same thing that we see happening in Chad, it is their interest that is at heart. Not because they suddenly love, oh, this is France are free. This poor sick friend, we love them. Zero. We, they love their gold. They love their silver. They love their aluminum. That is what is triggering them in this country, Laurentia. Let's call it spade a spade. All right, now uh, let, let's come back to uh, the the, uh, the reason why uh, the uh, for Malian government took this decision. Now it's because France says uh, 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 Mali is uh, treating with uh, mercenaries uh, from the uh, Russian Wagner group. Uh, so do you think uh, that France is uh, threatened by Russian military presence in Mali? And if that be the case, why so? Let's come back a little bit, Laurentia. The French have been given the opportunity to do the same thing that the Wagner group is trying to do. And it's not like Mali just got up and said, let's work with the Malian group, I mean, uh, with the uh, Russian group. The French were given the opportunity. Minuska was there. Uh, the Special Force was there. Operation Balkan was there. They even brought uh, EU. The Danes were there. The Norwegians were there. They could not get the job done. So Mali, as an independent country, decided to make its own decisions and say, you guys have not been able to push out these terrorists. We want to look elsewhere. Again, as I said before, I am not a fan of Russia and the Wagner mm. Group because we've seen them do a lot of atrocities in Central African Republic. But again, 
Just being objective as an African, African countries have the right to make their own decisions. Right. If you have failed them in this area, they have the right to make their own decision on who they want to work with, why they want to work with those countries. And France cannot and should not and will not have the right to detect those countries who they're working with. Yes, they are complaining about the Wagner group. So what? You were given the opportunity to do the same thing. You failed. You couldn't do it. You couldn't drive the terrorists. You couldn't fight the people. You couldn't give them their sovereignty. 60% of the land was occupied by terrorists in the north at that time. I don't know what percent it is right now. And you couldn't do anything about it. Now they go ahead, they get a different partner and say, we want to work with these people. And you come in and say, oh, no, you cannot work with the partner group. What did you do when you're given the opportunity? How far did you go? Did you drive the terrorists? You went into negotiation with the Tuaregs. Is that what you are called to do? No, you are called to fight, to reclaim the nation from the hand of terrorists. You didn't do it. So these people have the right. So the complaint by France is not legitimate. That is not a legitimate complaint. They have an ulterior motive, and people see beyond that ulterior motive. That's what's happening, Laurentia. So France should keep all those complaints about, oh, you know, we, you're working with the Wagner group. You are not a master to dictate to them. Tell them what you can do. They gave you the opportunity to succeed. You couldn't succeed. You failed because you are not that superpower that you claim you are. So let another person try. Again, as I said, I might not be a, friend, a fan of this, but I'm simply supporting the sovereignty of a country to make its own decision without interference. France does not own Mali. Mali belongs to Malians. Let them make their own decisions as it best fits them. All right, so thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah. We have a few more minutes to be together. Now, when you take a look at the continent, uh, over time, uh, the uh, anti-French sentiments have been growing uh, due to uh, uh, the uh, kinds of policies that France has been uh, implementing in the continent, uh, like we have been discussing earlier on. So is it possible that the, if France changes its way of doing things, uh, changes its policies in the continent, uh, and with the current uh, mindset that Africans have uh, towards France, France, the relations between these African countries and France can actually ameliorate in the future. Laurentia, we say in English that all habits die hard. All habits die hard. You are not going to ask the French suddenly to become Americans or become English. All habits die hard. France has a policy of assimilation. It is not going to change tomorrow. People thought that when Macron, Emmanuel Macron, with that you know, young, energetic ability, came to power, he started talking about, oh, Africans have to take their own decision. Everybody thought that the French policy towards Africa is going to change. And almost everybody was welcoming Emmanuel Macron and saying, this guy is going to do something. He's going to do something about the French CFA. He's going to do something about the colonial tax. He's going to do something about French-African relations. He's going to do... But what do we see? It is instead a multiplication and intensification of those policies. So... All habits die hard. You're not going to change France suddenly tomorrow. But again, Africans are willing to work with whoever. If you come in with clean hands, he that comes to the table with equity comes with clean hands. If you come with clean hands, I'm sure Africans are going to receive them. Nobody hates France because you're a French person. No. Nobody hates French people. We have a lot of French friends. You know, I went to school, my postgraduate education with French people, a lot of them. We went to school together. We have good friends. We Africans are revolting against French policies, entrenched French assimilation of Africa. That is what people are against. France should not dictate to Africa. France should come as independent. You might have been a colonial master, but colonialism has ended. This new colonialism that you are trying to implement in Africa will fail woefully. Because what happened back then, you don't expect it. In fact, many people are even asking for, you know, uh, a retribution which we don't want to go there. They are asking for payment for what France did to, to Africa. But that's not the point. That's not where we're going. Just work with the African continent as partners. Come in as equal partners. Get rid of assimilation. Get rid of the France CFA. Get rid of exploiting people's resources and putting puppet leaders everywhere that are going to implement French interests in Africa. Get rid of that. Come to the table with clean hands. And Africans will receive you. You know, Africans are very, you know, honorable people. They will come to the table. They will receive you as partners, equal partners. And do not dictate Africans and say, we will only work with you if you don't work with country A or country B or country C. 
those are still colonial uh, uh, signals that you're sending. It, as long as you continue to send colonial signals dictating to Africa and say, if you work with this country, we will not work with you, it is not going to work in this dispensation. Come to the table with clean hands, and Africa will receive you just as we do in our villages. You come with clean hands, we receive, we eat together as a family, we do everything. Africans will do the same with France. But we come with this two-faced, double-edged mentality and master-servant mentality, African will resist you to the core. So change your policy towards Africa and all will be well. All right, so thank you so much, Mr. Elijah. Just your last words before we uh, wrap up uh, on the program uh, this day. And now you mentioned earlier that uh, old habits uh, die hard, and it's going to be difficult for France to change its policy towards Africa. But if you were to ask to give some advice to the French government of its dealings with the continent, uh, what would you tell them? A roundabout. On the policy of De Gaulle, get rid of it. Because that's where all this started. Starting in the time of the God. Every policy that was implemented in Africa was that of colonial master and the master. We have the right to your resources. We have, the, we have to af adopt French culture. You have to get rid of African culture and implement French culture. We have to be the one to, 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 to you know, operate your resources and then give you peanuts. All this. No. Get rid of those policies of uh, the God. Come to the table, come afresh, and Africans will receive you. And I'm telling you, with the influence that France has had in Africa, with their bases in Africa, with, with, with uh, their culture being implemented in many African countries, Africans will be willing to work with you. But if you come as master and servant, or you come as colonial master and colonize, and you bring that mentality, you are still going to see this anti-French sentiment going to its apex. It started in Mali and Burkina Faso. It might not end there. I'm not speaking. Chad, I mean uh, Gabon, applied for Commonwealth status. And I think they got it. Who else is going to go next? China is coming in. All these other countries. India is coming in. We talk about the BRICS. They are coming in. So France should rethink its policy because there are many people knocking at the doors of Africa. Africa is not going to sit there and say, oh, we've dealt with France for so long. Please stay outside want to deal with France. It's not going to be happen like that. He that comes to the table and come with clean hands, Africans will eat with them. That's my last word. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Elijah. If France wants to continue its dealings with the continent to be smooth, it has to do a turnaround of its policy. It has to bring something better to the table to present to Africans and try to quell this anti-French sentiments that have grown over time in the continent. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Elijah Enoaku, researcher with Leeds University on African development. Thank you so much for your time this day. Well, tell of viewers, it is on that note that we draw the curtains into this edition of the program uh, where we uh, were talked about uh, the French uh, the Malian interim government uh, banning all uh, French NGOs from operating in the country. And this was as a result of uh, the uh, French government uh, taking a decision to uh, stop uh, development aid to the West African states. So we thank all those who took out time to, uh, uh, to, 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 to partake in the program. We also thank our technicians uh, and the entire English desk of Afric Media for putting hands on deck to make the program a successful one. Do not miss out tomorrow. Do join uh, Rita Moto uh, to uh, uh, take a tour of what is happening on the continent. To, to do join her to discuss another interesting uh, topic of what is going on on the continent and how we can continue to uh, seek African solutions to African problems. Until then, you have a wonderful uh, day in the company of more programs on Afric Media. Media. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.